Our first project today is this beautiful set of corbels. I paid $10 for the set of these. They are in really good shape. They can hang or sit. And now all we need to do is give them a quick paint job. I'm using up a couple of my almost empty paint containers today. I've got little black dress and beadboard. We're just gonna mix the two together to make this gorgeous gray. DIY paint is a highly pigmented clay-based paint. It's nice and thick, so it provides amazing coverage. Once I got two solid coats onto these corbels, here's what they look like. Already an improvement, but we're gonna take them up another notch with some DIY wax. First up, I am using the clear wax just giving the entire corbel one nice coat before I apply the white wax. And I have procrastinated filming and editing for so long that I have deleted some footage. So if you've not seen me white wax things before, I will drop a video right here in the upper hand corner so you can see how I applied that white wax. But here's a look once they're done, nice and Christmassy, ready for their new homes. On this custom piece, I had it listed to be painted. The customer that bought it has requested a sagey green with some baby's breath. I'm gonna be doing a custom mix of DIY sandy blonde and some gypsy green to get a beautiful sage. I used three parts sandy blonde to one part gypsy green. After two coats are dry, we have got this gorgeous sagey green. Now let's get it all sealed up with some DIY clear wax. And of course, DIY wax is so soft and buttery smooth, really easy to apply. I just use a brush here and give the entire piece one even coat. Drop me a comment down below and let me know if you have ever tried a custom color blend. So this customer wanted sage green with baby's breath. Here's the final look and I am in love. It just took this tote up to a much more high-end farmhouse look. Next up, we are going to take this piece of faux antique salvage. I say faux because it's not actually an old piece. It's a Hobby Lobby piece. I paid $12 for it at a Savers during the For the Love of Junk weekend. We had so much fun shopping and it sold on a live for $39.95. Now I am going to give it a better paint job. Whatever is on here got a little yellowy, just a faux distressed finish, not great. So let's make it better. To give this piece some great texture, I'm gonna mix my salt wash in with some DIY layered chocolate for my first layer of chippy, chunky, antique goodness. I don't need a lot. This is just gonna be kind of a base undercoat of texture. So I'm gonna add about mm, one part paint to half a part salt wash here and see what we get. You can always add more. Remember, you can't take it away. That's going to be plenty for what I want. See how nice and thick it makes my paint now? I'm going to start creating some texture, mostly around the edges and corners, maybe where dirt and grime and dust and yuck would have built up over the years. You can grab all of the paint and products on my website, upcycledbybree.com, except for that salt wash. I get my salt wash from Sammy over at Unicorn Dust Designs. I know most of you know Sammy. She is a great friend. I will drop her link for salt wash in the description box below. Now that our brown salt wash base coat has had time to dry for several hours, you can see that great texture on there. We are going to do a coat of Birdie Sweet Pickens Milk Paint over the top. Milk Paint is my favorite for getting that genuine antique finish. I'm going to mix one part paint to one part water. I always start with warm water and then I put my paint powder in. If you haven't used Milk Paint before, don't be intimidated. It just takes a little practice and it makes a beautiful finish. 
I'll mix my powdered paint and water up and then let it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes. It should be this runny milkshake consistency after it has sat. I wasn't too worried about a little bit of clumps in my paint. If you want a smoother paint, mix it with an immersion blender. I put on one nice thick coat and then I used my heat gun to start drying the paint. I held my heat gun a little too long in a few areas until that paint started to crackle and chip. The reason I don't mind those clumps in the paint, when I go to use my orbital sander and it hits those clumps, it provides a little extra chippiness. Here is what it looks like after I used 120 grit over the entire piece. What do you all think about this beautiful finish? I'm using my clear beeswax over the top of the paint to get it all sealed up. This wax is thicker than the DIY wax. I would say it's a little bit um, stickier almost. It smells so good like oranges, like citrus. It seals the milk paint up beautifully, but you can also use it over raw wood. Here is a look once that whole piece is waxed up. What do you think? I really think this elevated the look of this Hobby Lobby piece and made it look like more of a genuine antique. You can see the little bit of salt wash layered chocolate color popping through through the milk paint and it even distressed down to some of that wood. I am in love. Next project is this beautiful long brass planter, but Angela wants it painted and y'all know I don't usually paint my brass. She has a custom request to have it match Penelope, the purple cabinet. I named it Flora. She renamed it Penelope, but she would like it to be French millinery with some of the dark floral transfers. So let's get that accomplished for Angela. DIY paint is an amazing, thick, clay-based paint that does not require a lot of prepping and priming, but I am going to clean this piece with just some basic glass cleaner. This is actually a really great all-purpose cleaner for your small projects that just need cleaned up a little bit. You can see it's not super dirty. I like this Wyman's lemon oil. I have it linked in my Amazon shop. You can find it if you need some for yourself. I've literally had this bottle for, I think like, I don't know, three years, like the whole time I've been doing this gig. All you need is just a little bit and it's gonna take all of that icky sticker residue off very easily. Well, my phone was not recording, so that's fun. <laughs> I got one coat of paint on this bad boy and you can see it's a little streaky, but I'm gonna let it dry and not mess with it. Not gonna try to get full coverage on one coat since it is metal, um, but oops, so sorry about that. <laughs> Let's let it get dried up now. Y'all, I promise next week's video will be much better. It's been a week. I used some Rust-Oleum Matte Clear to seal this piece up before I grabbed my dark floral transfer. Now I'm gonna use the last of this dark floral transfer over my piece. I did let it dry and cure up all the way overnight just so there's no risk of pulling that paint off when I apply my transfer since I did paint over metal. I also carry these redesigned with Prima transfers over on my site. If you didn't know, they are easy to use. I just cut out the piece that I want. It is like a sticker that comes on the clear sheet and it has a paper backing. So cut out the piece you would like. Once you have it cut out, you'll remove the clear piece of transfer from the paper backing and lay it on your project where you would like to adhere it. Once you have it placed where you would like, you can use the enclosed rubbing stick and start rubbing your transfer onto your piece. You wanna make sure that you have it nice and pressed down before you start pulling the plastic up. If it looks like it's pulling the transfer up, rub it down a little more in that spot and then slowly begin to remove your plastic. Then I like to use either my clean finger or a clean cloth and just make sure that transfer is all nice and rubbed down. 
You can use your transfers just the way they come on the sheet or you can cut them into pieces and make them your very own design. I used up the last of my transfer and once I had all the pieces on, we went back outside and I put on one more coat of that Rust-Oleum Matte Clear to make sure the transfer would not scratch off. And as much as I love brass, I do love the way that this planter turned out and now Angela has a beautiful piece to match Penelope.